three, two, one, it's showtime. Sherry, it's a get well Wednesday, and you seem to be making progress. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing through it, boy. Pushing through. It's just, you know, when you get nervous, it's like uh, after you, like, if, if anybody has ever had COVID and you get over, it's like the residual things that you have to deal with. And so it's that thing. It's always uh, just trying to not cough, say a prayer for me, that I can make it through without. <laughs> without coughing, but I feel much better. So I'm thankful to be here. So thankful. Now y'all, yesterday, we talked about a question that comedian Michael Blackson posted on social media. And Michael wrote, is it cool for your homie to hit up your girl and ask her how she's doing? And I had said, uh, no. And then I thought about it some more and I said, hell no. And then I was like, hell to the no, have it. <laughs> so I wanted to know what uh, you all thought. So we posted the question on our social media page and y'all had a lot to say. Okay, so Coco Love said, call on God. Cause after that call, he gonna have to take you home. Don't call my man. I thought it was Coco Love. Ain't no love in that. <laughs> um, Adara Dahl said, is he in the hospital? Am I dead? Because I have questions. And then my name is Tyshawn said, hell no. For what? Call your own boo. And if you ain't got one, call Casper and get a boo. <laughs> She said, leave mine alone. So I kind of feel like the general consensus is, uh, don't call nobody's man, don't call nobody's wife, don't call nobody but yourself, okay? <laughs> yeah, people, people don't play that. Maybe you want to call on God, because everybody kept saying God, mm-mm, no. <laughs> Um, so I was so happy yesterday to have Dolly Parton on the show. I, I, this was such a dream for me. And it was so great because we were talking and Dolly has this saying, the higher the hair, the closer to God. So I had tried on uh, three wigs and she loved the three wigs. <laughs> she loved the three wigs. But what Dolly didn't see was, you know, I got these wigs on and I had to get into my performance at nine to five while I was wearing the wigs. <laughs> um, and once they start, I'm telling y'all, once they started playing nine to five, I could not help myself. So I figured I either nailed Dolly's look or I nailed RuPaul's look. I can't. <laughs> It's something about you put that blonde hair on and you just, I don't know what takes over, but something did. So thank you so much, Dolly Parton, for coming on my show. What, a, what an amazing thing. So I don't, clap if you watch The Office, the, the show The Office. That is my show. The Office ended more than 10 years ago, but it still touches people even to this day. And Rain Wilson, who played Dwight Schrute, yes. he got a sweet handwritten note on a napkin from a flight attendant who was a fan. And the note said, 
The office got me through some of the most darkest days of my life. I can't thank you enough for that. And isn't that, like, amazing? So Rain posted the note, and he, say, he said, uh, so humble to be a part of a show that affected, touched, comforted, and inspired, and continues to do so. Which I thought was really amazing that he did that, because I love The Office so much, I binge watch it anytime I'm out of town, any chance I get. If I'm sick, I'm turning on The Office. And I met Rain, I got a chance to meet Rain at an Arby's in L.A. We were both in line, and I could not stop gushing about how much I love The Office. And I know Rain just wanted to get his roast beef and cheddar <laughs> with his curly fries, but he was so nice to me. And, you know, it's just, there are some shows and music that get you through things and that give you such joy. Like, I meet people, and I... Brian Courtney Wilson, who's been on the show a few times, I met him on the red carpet, and I just started crying when I met him. Poor thing, he was just like, he was trying to tell me to move out the way so he could finish <laughs> getting his fit. I couldn't stop crying because, you know, certain songs get you through moments, and when you meet the person who sings that song, it just brings all of that back. And so I looked at him, and John, we were together. We were at the Stellar Awards. Stellar Awards in Vegas. And, and I, you were like, Brian Goody Wilson! I'm telling you, yeah. I couldn't stop crying. So it's just, they affect you, they touch your heart. And uh, Rain, this was so nice to see that you posted the attendance note. So <laughs> you are like a class act. And you know, it's another thing that I really liked. I love Travis Barker. Uh, he's really strict, but the, Travis Barker, let me tell you something, but he's a not so strict dad when it comes to his 18 year old daughter, Alabama. Now, Alabama posted a video to TikTok. She was asking her dad a series of questions about her dating, and Travis was pretty cool on the answers. Take a look. What would you do if I went out with a boy and I just completely stopped answering you? Just. I would come to your location and I would find you. <laughs> okay. Am I allowed to have guy friends over? If I'm home. Am I allowed to close my door with a guy in the room? Not without me coming in to check on you. <laughs> would you let me drive to a guy's house by myself at night? No. You don't... Travis Barker, because you know what? You know, whenever I would see Travis Barker, he would always be on the red carpet, tongue and Kourtney Kardashian down. <laughs> like, but Travis knows who he is. I think that's why he said what he said. Pink, Pink was the same way. When Pink came on The View to get interviewed, I remember she said she wouldn't let her kids get tattoos and she would not let them drink. Because it's something that happens when you have children. You might be one way, but then you got kids and you start feeling a certain way. And this made me really like Travis Barker a lot because he's got a daughter and he knows how men are. So I agree with him. Because I know in my family, uh, nobody was coming up to that bedroom. Not at all. <laughs> My mother said, there ain't no chairs in that room. Ain't no chairs in that... Ain't nothing in that room but a bed. And that means you ain't supposed to be up in there. <laughs> Not all. You ever have your mother say, don't, don't... And you don't get... With, cl open up that door. <laughs> you could not close the door. What you doing with the door closed? You couldn't close the door? And uh, she would say to me, why you gotta close that door? And I, I said, the same thing, why you close your door? <laughs> I didn't say it, I set it up in my head. <laughs> I said it, and when I was moving my neck, that was in my head, uh, too. <laughs> oh, because my mother was always like, ain't no boy supposed to be up in your room. You come on down here and you watch Family Feud with everybody else. <laughs> so me and the boy that liked me, we had to sit on the couch in between my mother and my auntie, my auntie Gloria with her, with her fleshy arms, and we was both sitting there going, survey says, and we clapping, good answer, good answer. <laughs> The whole time, you ever been sitting with your boyfriend on the couch with your parents and you secretly trying to touch his dog, touch his fingers? <laughs> oh, I'm the only one? I'm the only one. Okay, all right. But Travis, I get it. So, I, you, you know what? You doing great with your daughter. That's what I say. You doing good. <laughs> oh, my God. I can remember 
watching Family Feud and I was there with my mother and I was like, oh, I can't stand my mother. <laughs> my whole life. And that, but I did the same thing to Jeffrey when he... Oh, anyway. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> Y'all trying to find love is hard enough. But finding a connection and the person ghosting you makes it even harder. And I saw this clip from a recent episode of 90 Day, The Single Life Online. Oh, this one. A man named Tyree got stood up on his first date. Take a look. I'm sitting here in the restaurant waiting for Tiffany to show up for our first date, and she still hasn't arrived yet. All right, text her. Has she still not texted you back? Yeah, nothing back from her. I guess I'd call her next. Please leave your message for two, seven, nine. So it's been an hour now that I've been waiting for Tiffany and she hasn't responded to my text or called me back or anything. So I guess I got stood up. Oh! Tiffany, this was so hard to watch. Tiffany, you were so wrong for this. Like, I saw him bring flowers into the restaurant for her because he was so excited. Tyree, he got dressed up, and I felt his pain. You know, women, we don't like it when men stand us up. So I say to Tiffany, why don't you just be a woman and say, I'm not interested in you? <laughs> you know, because... You got other people's feelings on the, on the other line. You know, as much as people don't want to hear it, when you say, I'm not interested, it allows the person to just move on. Because you got to think, how would you feel if it happened to you? Maybe Tyree came on too strong. But you know what? Rip the Band-Aid off and tell him, you know what, this is not working out. I'm not interested. That way he can move on. <laughs> you know, I don't know, like... When I was in a phase, I was going out on a lot of dates. And when I tell you, I got ghosted on some. I went out on a date with a guy. It, we, it was in Atlanta. We had such a great time. I'm telling you, he was fine as all get up. Picked me up. He took me to this great restaurant. We had a great time. We laughed. It was so much fun. He dropped me off back at the hotel. I'm telling y'all, I let, I let him touch my face. He was nibbling all on the side of my dog going <laughs> face. And then he ghosted me. Ghosted me. Okay, if I didn't know he was gonna ghost me, he didn't he would have never got close to my ear. I'm telling you. <laughs> I am telling you. And the thing about getting ghosted, you you sit there clap if you've ever been ghosted before. Okay. When you are ghosted, you sitting there going, we had a good time. What happened? You trying to figure out, did I do something wrong? Did I talk too much? And I specifically, I didn't talk anything about the business. I was like, what do you like? What do you like to do? Oh, you do the, you, this is your job? Oh, the, what? Look at your car. I was like, D extra. And so, um, he just ghosted me. So I finally, I decided to send him a text. And I said, look, was there any critique? Is no harm, no foul. I'm not gonna be offended. If you could just tell me what happened? Yeah. And he texted me back, and he said that he was very intimidated by all the people who recognized me and who, who were coming up to the table. And he said, now, I couldn't help that. I really could. He didn't realize the level of who he was with. And he said that, you know, he saw that the manager took him from the table that he reserved and seated us at a better, better table. Uh, it was strangers coming up to the table. They wanted an autograph and a picture. When I got, went to the bathroom, he saw a bunch of girls follow me to the bathroom. <laughs> and so he was very honest. He said he was used to being the big man on campus. And um, he said, you know, I like you. I just got intimidated. So people get ghosted for a number of reasons. So Tyree, I just say keep your head up and save those flowers because there is somebody. There is somebody, Tyree. And, to the man, and, and, and don't let a nibble on your ear. That's also. <laughs> you hold off. That ear is special, Tyree. So save it. But y'all, here's something else. There's this new dating show that is coming out that is taking things to another level. It is called Couple to Thruple. Okay, so four couples, they go to a romantic resort to decide if they want to invite a third person into their relationship. So we got a sneak peek. Take a look. For the next month, four curious couples will be given the unique opportunity to turn that fantasy into a reality. 
I've never been on a date with three people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Every few days, they'll invite one of 14 open-minded singles to thruple up with them in the resort. We would like to invite... With a bed big enough for three. Have you done something alone with him? What I'm saying is that why wasn't it a group decision? I felt a connection, but you know, it's more towards me, not you. I'm tapped out. Last night it was just like a show. Okay, first of all, what is this world coming to? Would you please say? I don't normally like to judge anybody's relationship, but this one right here. I'm a judge. <laughs> I don't like this because I feel like thruples make a mockery out of marriage. I really do. I, you know, it, 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 y'all don't... And I know it sounds crazy because I'm divorced. I'm twice divorced. But I still believe in marriage. I still believe in the sanctity of marriage. <laughs> and I feel like when you start bringing other people into your marriage bed, that is a recipe for disaster. Okay? You find yourself in all kinds of trouble. And I don't know if all of these couples were married, but I'm gonna tell you something. I was in a thruple one time. Yeah, I was. But nobody, to nobody told me I was in the thruple. <laughs> I did not know. I was an unwilling thruple -y. I did not know I was sharing him with somebody else until that somebody else popped up at my job. I don't know if that ever happened. That is the worst. That is the worst when somebody pops up at your job and you look up from your typewriter. Okay. <laughs> Did I just date myself? <laughs> Maybe I should have said, you look up from your word processor? I'm real. <laughs> oh my God. No, literally, I was at my job and she showed up at my job and that's when I found out, oh my gosh, if we both got the same one. But here's the problem. We, we worked it out. We worked it out before she beat my ass at the law firm. <laughs> oh my God, she was horrible, horrible. But here's the thing about these thruples. They start out fun because y'all all at the club drinking, you having a good time, y'all telling each other you attractive, can I get you a drink, can we do this? Then y'all agree, then you go home. You live out all your wildest fantasies. All you, you, you over here moving and grooving. But then you go, wait a minute, ain't nobody paying attention to me. Then you like, wait a minute, y'all two over there, you having fun without me. Then you sitting over there looking like, wait a minute, what are y'all talking about? What, what, what's so funny? Can, is somebody gonna let me in on the joke? <laughs> then you look up and it's not a thruple anymore, okay? It's two people enjoying each other, okay? And you know what? It's a couple and you not in it. And I just, you, I feel like, then you find out, okay, they done made arrangements and you don't even know about the arrangements that they done made. All kinds of stuff gets going on. I don't even want to share my friends that way, okay? I feel like if I introduce you to a friend, we should all be hanging out. I'm literally. I don't want my friends hanging out without me at all. I just feel like when you open up that door, we, you know, the friends, we all hanging out together, but when you start opening up that door and you bringing other people into the bed, it's just gonna be trouble. So even the word thruple, I don't even like the word thruple. I don't like the word thruple. I think somebody came up with the word thruple to cover up their own mess. That's what it is. <laughs> I just think about that, like, I, I can't, I, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to see nobody else. I'm not, mm -mm, it's just too much. It's just certain things I don't want to share with other people. I don't want to share my food. I don't want to share my shoes. And I don't want to share my man, okay? <laughs> I can't. As hard as it is to get a good man and I got to share it with another woman, us. I can't, you know what, but if, if there's still some people, that's the kind of thing you like and you want to get into it. And if you, oh, I heard a yell. <laughs> Who did I hear a yell from? I said, if you want to, you like thruppling, sir? <laughs> no, now you want to backtrack, huh? <laughs> Is this your lady that you sitting next oh, to? Oh, that's your sister. <laughs> oh, that's your sister. Does he get into thruppling, sister? Does he get he used to. He used to. <laughs> he used to get into thruppling, huh? I don't know about you, sir. You look like a good thruppler, but all right. 
You used to be into thruffling? I, I, I used to be into everything. I was younger. Oh, when you was younger. Like but you, 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 you got old and your knees started hurting, huh? I, 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 oh, my goodness. God bless us all. Why'd you get out of thruffling? Well, I'll say this. If your soulmate is into what you're into and you both want to thruffle, go ahead. Okay. I got no arguments against that. I agree with you. But see, that's what you start out saying. You start out going, well, if we both into it, and then that one, then your soulmate be like, now you got another soulmate. Oh, I no. All right, well, thank you, sir. Sit down. <laughs> I can see the spirit of Thruple still on him. Hey, thank you, Mr. Thruple. I appreciate you. So it's streaming on Peacock. When is the show? Because Mr. Thruple wanted to know when it, he, he wanted to know when it was. It's streaming on Peacock. Mr. Thruple is streaming on Peacock and it's starting February 8th. Maybe we'll have a Thruple watch party for you. Y'all, we got a great show for you today. <laughs> Later on, an incredible mother and daughter weightlifting team are here. But up next, I can see your voice. Host Ken Jong is right here. <laughs> We'll be right back. My first guest just won the Critics' Choice Association's Comedy Trailblazer Award, which makes sense because his career path goes something like this. He's a doctor turned stand-up comedian turned movie star turned mass singer judge. Yeah. And now he's adding game show host to the list with the hit show, I Can See Your Voice. Please welcome Ken Jong. Oh, I love it, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, I've been happily married to my wife. Yes. Over, uh, honestly, going on 20 years. 20. I love you, Ho. That's her last name. My, I love you, Ho. That's my la That's her last name, Tran Ho. I married a Ho, and I'm her pimp daddy for life. <laughs> let me tell you something. Look, pimping ain't easy, and sometimes you need another to throuple, so I get it. In my community, it's fine, I think. <laughs> Please cut all this out, okay? I love you. I, I love, love you that. so much, kid. Yeah, that was my throupling dance. That was your, just the fact yeah. that you, you made it on those knees. I made okay. it on the knees, yeah. You were so good. I will have to get a knee replacement tomorrow, but it was worth it. It was so it worth was so it. It was so worth a bit. You know, I, I am so, I have not seen you in a while. We go back 20 years. 20 kid. years. Oh my gosh. And I remember because you were, I remember meeting you, you yeah. were a doctor right. with a comedy hobby. Right, yes, yes, yes. yes. She, honestly, Sherry, and Sherry's one of the first comedians to be so nice to me when I first moved out to LA over yeah, 20 years man. ago. It was like, there, there was like a coffee house in the valley, like kindness to strangers yes. and everything. It was, uh, she We'd was- do like open mics. Open, like you would have to pay to get, Three dollars to do to open do mic, stand up. just to perform in front of comedians Absolutely. that also paid three dollars, <laughs> and they would never laugh at you. Nobody laughed. Yeah, except for you. You were the. I, I'm not just saying this because you have your own. She was the star, and then we all knew that she would blow up. Okay. No, for real. You know. You, you know how I. You know how I feel. And what I loved about this is, I, I think a year or two later. 
I was interested in maybe in doing like monologue classes or right. doing like a one person show class. Yes. And, we... and you and I coincidentally signed up for the same class and she gave this monologue. I swear to God, it was so funny. It was so dramatic. Oh, well, it was thank you. so, and she literally started crying at the end of her monologue and all of us in the class couldn't stop, couldn't stop crying. And so everything you see in her segment one, this is, reminds me of that. That's vintage Sherry and I just oh, couldn't be, you know what I mean. John. No, 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 okay, no, no. now, you so let I mean. me, let me now uh, just give you your flowers because I love you so Good, much. Can we talk about me and my thruppling, please? <laughs> now that I gave her her flowers. Like, no, I, just to watch you and where you are now and know when I, when I first met you, like, I did not know you said that you owed your career to your wife and to your mother. Yes, yeah. It, yes. Look yeah, at no. the ladies. Oh, thank you. Look wow. at the ladies. My mom and my hoe. Um, <laughs> what? I know your wife loves you. Ooh, yeah, she yeah. loves you. In no you. way is she tired of that joke. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, it was uh, my my wife actually, and she's also a physician. Yeah. I used to be a doctor, and once I started, once I booked my first movie, yeah, she encouraged me to quit my job right afterwards. So, uh, like, I was actually too afraid. Real talk, I was too afraid to quit my job. I wanted the support of my wife and family, and it was my mom and my dad that said. Look, if you have your wife's support, you have our support. Your yeah. wife is your family and we'll support you. So honestly, if it wasn't for Tran, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. So wow. yeah, for real. Yeah. And you know, with this the thing, I was because I know you're still a doctor, you still have your license. I've been trying to get a prescription. I'm trying to get over this cold. I was hoping it if you I came, heard about that. Yeah, cool. You think you can write me something? I can't and I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> I'm involved in this medical thruple right now that <laughs> And they told me not to give you a Z-Pack. Oh my God, okay, I guess. I'll wait 10 days post thruple to give you. Ken Jong, you, you, you are so crazy. <laughs> you, you had a mini reunion. I loved yes. you on Community. I want to tell you, you that. When you were on you. Community. Thank you. And you had a mini reunion with two of your co-stars, Joel McHale yes. and Donald Glover. That was... So how was that? Oh, it was, I mean, just to be with, like, a legend right now, someone who I love and respect in Donald Glover, it was, I don't know, I, it, it was beautiful. And, and, and then Joel McHale just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a thruple I didn't like. I, I didn't love. like that thruple. This... Thumbs down. This relationship that he has had with Joel McHale, this is what I want to see in Community, the movie. Oh, like, is you. it happening? Because I know the strike well, happened. Thank you. What's going on with it? Well, fingers crossed. You want to get everyone, everyone like Donald, they're so successful trying to get everyone scheduled, aligned. Every single person in this cast is so busy. Allison Brie, Vet Nicole, Nicole Brown. Nicole Brown. Killian Jacobs, Donald Glover, obviously, is Danny Pudi. Yeah. And also, and, and Joel McHale, who's very available. He's still waiting on set right now. <laughs> He's so available. He's like the annoying of the thruple. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you, okay, so we're waiting on this. Hopefully this yes, will happen. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, I want to congratulate you because you host and you executive produce your new game show. It's a hit. I can see your voice. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, thank my you. gosh. Now, this show... I did not think that this show could get wilder than your other show, Mass Singer. Right. Can you explain how, how, how it works? Sure. I can see your voice. Yeah, I can see your voice. It's, it's a little bit different from Mass Singer, but it's from the same people that okay. brought you the Mass Singer. It's, you're, it, this time we have a contestant, only one contestant, that you want to help win life changing money. Yeah. And, that, and you do that by determining if these six secret voices are good singers or bad singers without ever hearing their voice. So okay. you do lip sync, you interview them, and all these things back and forth, it's really, really fun, and all this is designed to win this contestant life-changing money, and then that person gets to do a duet with the musical superstar, like last week was Dionne Warwick. It was just, it, it's so much fun. Yes. It, 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 it's like Extreme Makeover Home Edition where you, you always go home feeling good. Yes. And it's never mean-spirited. It really is in, in many ways. Like, if there's a passion project that's a game show, this is it. So I'm, I'm so proud to be associated with this. And that's what you bring. And that's what we need. 
Thank so you. I'm so happy for you. Hey, I'm so happy for you. I, I, I just oh, looking no. at you right now, it brings like so many memories. I just, I, you're just, you're just family. No, I love you so much. Oh, and I love yeah. you too. So this is nice, and I, you don't go anywhere. Ken is not going anywhere because up next we're gonna play a fun game called I Can Hear Your Lunch. <laughs> don't miss it. <laughs> We'll be right back. I am back with the host of I Can See Your Voice, Ken Jong. All right. And it is time to play I Can Hear Your Lunch. Okay, so Ken, here's how it works. We are each going to have 60 seconds to guess what the other person is eating based solely on what it sounds like. All right? So whoever guesses the most foods right wins. All right, so Ken, you're gonna guess first. Right. So put on your blindfold. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna put 60 seconds on the clock. Y'all bring out my first dish. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. All right. Here we go. Um. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm sick, I eat this. Mmm. Mmm. You may cut this, but <laughs> is it? Wait. Is it a milkshake? Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Okay, it, next dish. Next dish. Okay. <laughs> okay, this one right here. Uh, oh, it's a... Uh, it's a carrot. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Yeah, yeah! Okay, wait, wait. Puzzle to throuple. Okay, here we go. Okay, whoa! Okay, wait. Yep. Okay, here's this one right here. Mmm. <laughs> what? Lady oh. in a Tramp. Uh. Oh, spaghetti. Mmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, come on. What? What? A newspaper? Sounds like you're eating a newspaper. Mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, is it? Uh, hold on. Um, what? OK. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. I really wanted to be four out of four. That wasn't even you, Ken. That was me. I couldn't talk. But I love it when it's when it's like everything's all whipped up and you know whipped up and you spray it. Whipped cream. Yep, there you go. Oh, you got man. it. We, no, we gotta get at the kid. No, no, that, no, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, so, just, this okay. couple does not deserve to throuple. <laughs> okay, so kid. Yep. Now you got three right. No, you did get three right. I got it. Okay, okay, you got three right. 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 So now it is my turn. We're gonna reset yep. the clock. Okay. All right. I cannot see anything. I can't hear anything. Okay, so we'll put 60 seconds on the clock. And Ken, go. Okay. Okay, you're biting. Is that potato chips? Ah! Okay. Mm. Open it. Is it like a soda, Coke, or? Uh... Yeah. Okay. Wow, Sherry. Not fair. You're a good eater. Mm. Oh, mm. I'll, get, I'll give you a hint. What is that? What is that? Love that chicken Popeye. Oh, the Popeye chicken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> what's, what's next? Um. What is, what is that? <laughs> what is that kid? I, I, what is it? You got your mouth stuffed full of what? Uh, Lasagna? Mm, what is... uh, oh, no! I, I couldn't talk to help you. <laughs> oh, that's marshmallow! Oh, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, it's yeah. bubble gum! It's that last one when you got it in your mouth. It's hard to talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got a tie. Yeah, yeah. We got a tie. Yeah. We were always on the same plane, oh. when we, even when we first met each yeah. other, Ken. So with you being a good sport, oh. you still trying to chew it, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, j take it. There we go. Yeah. Take it. Now, Ken, you were such a great sport. We got you these bagel headphones. What? That's yours. No. Oh my God. Yes, we did. Oh my God. Yes, we did. So you can even hear better. There you go. Mm, 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 mm. Hear the soul sounds of your cinnamon bagel. Yo, I'm taking this to the corner bakery. Ken <laughs> Jong, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> thank you so much thank for being you. here. <laughs> Y'all be sure to watch I Can See.
see your voice tonight on Fox. And up next, a mother and daughter who are breaking records in weightlifting. Keep it right here. Kendra! <laughs> We'll be right back. If you follow me on social media, you know that I have been in the gym working out. And I started weightlifting, and I tell you, it has me feeling like superwoman. Well, Amanda and Gianna Andrews are a mother and daughter weightlifting duo who are putting their male counterparts to shame in the gym. Now, <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> These women have close to 100 weightlifting records in the state of Alabama. I love it. Y'all, please welcome Amanda and Gianna Andrews. <laughs> Amanda, you gotta tell me, I love watching you too. How did you both start weightlifting? So for me, it started in 2020 just with a New Year's resolution. I was a stay-at-home mom, wasn't happy with my body, wanted to lose weight. Um, didn't do anything fitness related before that, so I didn't know what I was doing. So I joined a program um, that was gonna kickstart the weight loss, and I did that for a year, hit all my weight loss goals, and after that, I was like, I gotta do something, so why not get strong? Yeah. So I started powerlifting. <laughs> all right, you got strong. <laughs> And Gianna, you're also a championship weightlifter. So what do you <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Tell me something. So what do your friends and your family say about you weightlifting? They think it's insane that my little body can lift so much weight. Um, <laughs> and me and one of my like best friends, we both work out together. So we get to hang out every day or yeah. pretty much every day. And shout out to my grandmother. She brings me all of my <laughs> snacks for me. <laughs> She does. She comes in clutch with the snacks. Oh, she comes in with the snacks. <laughs> yes. So, like, how much can you lift, Gianna? On my deadlift, my max is 242. Woo! Girl! <laughs> Girl, you just scared me. Okay, so now you are in school, Gianna. How in the world do you make time for weightlifting? So, we are virtual online. Mm -hmm. So, I work out four days a week. So, I normally do my work in the morning. And then, if I like miss an assignment, I'll normally just do it on Wednesday, which is my off day. Okay. And just kind of catch up. And then you catch up, so you're able to do it together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so combined, you both have broken about 95 weightlifting records. <laughs> All right. I love this. <laughs> so if you're thinking back, what is the most memorable? Probably my national record on squat. That was definitely one of my favorites. Um, I was sick the week before that competition. Okay. So I had to bounce back fast. Yeah. So the week came at the competition and I hit my record and I was so happy. That was Look at definitely the, my favorite. Is that you squatting right there? That's deadlift. That's yeah. a deadlift right there. Woo! <laughs> wow, girl. Okay. So I'm so excited to hear you speak. I I, I really want to see you work. I want to see you like do it. Okay. So you, can we go? Of course. And do, yeah. Come on. Now you notice, okay. <laughs> I'm going to the little weights over here, <laughs> all right? So what, all right, Amanda, what is the, what's the first workout that we're gonna do? So the first workout is gonna be the conventional deadlift. That's, that's how I deadlift. Okay. Um, so you basically just want to step up to the bar, um, feet uh, under your hips. Uh-huh. And you wanna be about an inch away from your shins. Okay. And then uh, push the booty back. Push to, it back. To about your knees. Okay. And then that's when you can drop your shins into the bar. Okay. So how important is form when you're doing this? Form is really important because, you know, as power lifters, they tend to think that we just lift really heavy all the time. Yeah. But we really spend a lot of time working on our technique and our form so that we can lift heavy safely. Okay. So okay. once you're here, you can grip it overhand like this, or you can switch one hand underneath. Okay. That's how I do it. And then you basically want to push the floor away from you uh -huh. as you bring the bar up. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then back down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so you lifted 135 pounds? Yes. Is that 135 yes. pounds? Okay, so Gianna, you're going to show <laughs> us how to do a sumo deadlift. Yes. What, now, what's the difference? Uh, so with conventional, you are more 
um, shoulder width apart. And sumo, you are wide like this. Okay. So All that's right. how I pull. That's just what is most comfortable. Okay. So I line my legs up about like a foot apart. Okay. And then I turn my pinky toes to the plate. Turn it to the plate. And then bend down and grab the bar. Bend down and grab the bar. And then bring your shins to the bar. Bring your shins to the bar. Girl! <laughs> Girl! Oh my God! I'm doing that the right way, Gianna said that, and I'm and I pull up my little weight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. You know what? I love I love this. And before we go, we wanted to give you something to wear when you walk into your next competition. So oh, bring it out. Thank you so much. We're giving you some jackets. I love that. The cherry jackets. Because we are, we are with you when you go to your champ, when you get your championship again. So Amanda and Gianna, thank you so much thank for coming and showing us. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Time for today's hot flash. This person recently became the first female rapper in history to score three number one albums. It's Nicki Minaj. Her Pink Friday 2 album broke records on Spotify in December as the biggest debut for a female hip hop album ever. And she dropped it on her 41st birthday. The Barbs are loving all her hot new music. That was today's hot flash. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Come be a part of my studio audience. Go to CherryShowTV.com for tickets. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. Tomorrow, actress Jasmine Guy will be here. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye. <laughs>